If you're a DJ that plays lots of house music, whether it be tech house, deep house, or even techno, then this simple trick is going to help your sets sound professional and add energy. This is used by lots of professional DJs and I'm going to break down this simple trick so that you can do it no matter what equipment you're on. Remember at the end of this video to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help us keep making more videos like this. Let's find out how it's done. For this trick to work, you need to choose songs that have a really punchy or groovy bass line, a prominent bass line that comes in and stands out in that song. So for example, here we have vibration. If I skip to the drop, you'll hear a nice groovy bass line come in. You also want to select songs that don't have much vocal, if any vocal as well, because you want to make sure that the bass line is the thing that stands out in this trick. The other thing you need to be aware of with song selection is making sure you choose songs that mix in key together. This is essential for this trick to sound good and perform well. I've got two tracks here with the Camelot notation, one in 7A and one in 7B, so they will harmonically mix well together because in this trick we are layering tracks and having them playing together where there is a lot of melodic information, such as the bass line. Now a lot of house music will have very long intros, there might be a minute worth of drums before a breakdown and then the drop even comes in. So we need to prepare our songs using hot cues so that we can get into the mix much quicker. There are a couple of ways of doing this. In house music like this one, there is a very obvious break that builds up into the drop. I've just set a hot cue on that change in phrase here. If you're not sure where that break is, you could always go to the drop and then beat jump backwards. Let's put it on 32 beats and I could beat jump backwards 32 beats and set my hot cue that way. Now I've got my hot cue set, that's great. I need to choose where I'm going to start the mix on the opposite side. Usually this will sound nice over the last drop of the song or the outro of the song. Don't wait too late until there are just drums there. Try and still have quite a lot of information going on in the song because it will create more of an impact when you swap the bass lines over. This step is optional. If you feel confident at performing all of these techniques at the end, then it's worth adding a reverb in here to add some more atmosphere to the technique. But just bear in mind, this will still sound great without any effects as well. It's something you can add on when you feel comfortable with what two hands can do across this equipment. I've got a reverb set up here on the track that I'm going to be mixing out of. You could apply a reverb to both tracks if you want to apply it to a master channel. It will still work just as nice. If you've ever wondered why house tech and techno DJs are able to create such impactful drops with the music, especially when the tracks are very subtle in their own right, it's because of this technique. And what they're doing is they will eliminate all of the low end of the music. So even when you're in the mix, there is no low end there. Now, when we add a low end back in, such as a bass line, it creates a much bigger impact when that track lands. In this technique, it allows you to filter sweep all of the low end away during the mix so that the track that's currently riding disappears with its low end. And then when you sweep it back, you're actually giving the crowd the new baseline of the new track and it just adds this layer of energy and this big impact to the set. I'm going to go through this example twice, first without effects, second with the optional reverb effect. So I'm going to set my track off and make sure that I hit the hot cue on time with the drop. Once I've got my timing right, I'm going to wait an entire phrase because it's not much of a build up 32 beats. I want to wait 32 beats and then reactivate the hot cue before I start mixing. Let's prepare the EQs ready, reactivate the hot cue. Now I can start fading this build up in. And as I fade it in with my opposite hand, I'm going to filter the main track up. Now we don't have any low end there, so I can quickly knock the low EQ out. And as I sweep it back, add the bass line or the low EQ of the opposite side. As you heard, we get this nice impact of the new bass line, but we still have some of the aspects and some of the parts of the vocal on the opposite side. I can then just continue my mix as normal, ready to finish the mix. 
And what that filter sweep does is it allows you to get rid of the low end of the music in a really subtle way. By sweeping up on the high pass filter, it's getting rid of all the low end. It's getting rid of all the bass line. So when I drop the low EQ down, it doesn't sound any different. So then when I sweep back, I'm just adding the low EQ in on the opposite side. Let's listen to that again with the optional effects, adding the reverb in on the channel that I'm filter sweeping up. Remember, we're waiting a whole phrase to reactivate the hot cue before bringing it in. In four, three, two, one. Now we're going to start filtering up. Add the reverb. Low end out, and then as I come back, I need to turn the reverb off so that we don't get the reverb on the drop of the next track. And then finish the mix as standard. And there you can see just how quickly you can create an impact when it comes to tech house, deep house, techno music, anything with that strong bass line that comes in by sweeping away all the low ends before re-adding a new bass line from the next track in. You really create an impact in your sets and it's a really good way to create that energy and atmosphere. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more tips and tricks like this, then just click the link where you'll get access to our Crossfader music pack and a secret free DJ tutorial that you won't find anywhere on YouTube. And you'll get to see inside some of our online courses too. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and do all that good stuff to help us keep making more like this. And I'll see you in another DJ tutorial very soon.